What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D here. Welcome back to Something to Consider. I'm saying it like that because I really like that name for this podcast. And that's the name of this podcast, Something to Consider. So in this episode, I wanted to go through friendships. I will be attending a reunion this weekend. And it's got me to thinking a lot about friendships. One of my close friends moved back after finishing out all of her programs, getting her PhD, and we had an opportunity to reconnect, she and I, along with two of our other friends, and we were together and just talked for, I think, like five hours. (laughs) It was something so simple. I invited them to my place, and we just hung out, and we had a good time, and it felt like no time had passed. So these are friends that as of this year, I will have known for 20 years, which feels so weird to say that I have friends for so long. (laughs) It definitely reminds me that I'm aging, but I also feel so fortunate and blessed and grateful to be able to say that. And also mean it. It's not just I'm saying that because it sounds good. It's true. These are women that I trust, that I respect, that I care for. And in having that conversation with them, one of the things that came up was our friendship and how it's evolved. Because naturally who we are in our early 30s is different than who we were in middle school in middle school it's where we place a lot of importance on what others think of us for myself I really cared about the opinions of boys at that time I was definitely boy crazy and so that played a lot into how I showed up in spaces how present I was Because I was so preoccupied with boys at times, I think it became a distraction. And we hear that. I feel like sitcoms, we used to hear that. (laughs) I'm trying to think maybe Tia and Tamara, perhaps the parents might have said something like, don't let that boy be a distraction. And granted, I was good about reining it in. I got the good grades I needed to get. I never let any of that distract me too much. But it definitely was something that took up a lot of my time in middle school. And so how that ended up affecting me and perhaps even sometimes my friendships is because I had such a heavy focus on that. I found myself wanting to be accepted and I would, not just me, I'm guessing a lot of kids do this, where you do and or perhaps say things just so you can fit in. And it kind of inherently limits you to being able to express fully who you are. Because if there's this fear or worry that it's not going to be accepted in a space where you want to be accepted, I was more likely to hide it and not embrace it, not share it, whatever it was. And I'm going to guess it was the same thing for my friends as well. And so I mention that because as we've grown to be older, What I've noticed is our interests have shifted and that's fine. That's going to happen. But something that I shared with my friends when they came over that day and I hesitated to share it because I just honestly didn't know how it was going to come across. I shared with them that I don't know that we would have the bond that we do if we were to meet each other as adults. Because oftentimes connections start off through interests. When I think about the friends that I have met in my adult life, it's, it has started off through interests. And so because with these women, we do have some overlapping interests, but I think the ones that are more obvious, we don't necessarily overlap. And so then the question becomes, 
how are we still able to be friends? And so one of the things I, I mentioned to them was, you know, I don't know that we would be, we would have this bond, but the reason I'm still friends with them is because there is mutual respect, there's trust, there's acceptance, there's vulnerability. And so it really comes down to the values. One, we do have that shared experience of growing up in that environment. And more specifically for us, we grew up in an environment that was predominantly non-black. And so we're black girls who are growing up in this space and dealing with feedback that taught us that we weren't good enough. And that is actually something that I have had to work through as an adult in therapy because that did a number on my self-esteem. And it would show up a lot in my romantic relationships and in the individuals that I chose to date of this feeling of not being good enough. And so that is an experience that we all went through. I'm even just now in my mind recounting conversations I've had with them. That was something that was traumatic for each of us in our own ways. And so it wasn't just the mere experience of going through that. It was other things too, of course, but that is the the thing that kind of sticks out to me as, as bonding us together is just being able to acknowledge that that happened and then healing through that. And so in these other arenas with them, what I've learned is around the acceptance piece of things. As we have grown in these different interests that we have, some of the things that they're interested in or that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in don't overlap. But it's given me the opportunity to exercise being accepting and to also exercise being respectful. Because I would say for myself that respect is probably... I'd have to think about it more, but respect is probably the number one thing I need in any relationship, friendship, romantic relationship, work relationship with family, respect has to be there. We can be different and we're going to be different in some ways because everyone's an individual, right? But as long as respect is there, then we can perhaps compromise or agree to disagree. But when there's not respect, toxicity everywhere, toxicity everywhere. And in seeing their differences and learning their interests, it's given me that opportunity to exercise being accepting as well as being respectful, as well as not judging. Because it's all too easy to box people into what we think of them initially or how they have shown up historically. And so unless we are seeing we're with someone side by side in their evolution, that does require a shift in us internally to accept that this person has changed and vice versa because I'm changing too. Vulnerability is another aspect of our friendship that I love because there's not many places where I feel like I can let let go of my mask and put my persona to the side. So knowing that I have this group of women who I feel like I can be completely myself and from what I can see from them, it's a mutual thing. It's something that's so beautiful. And it's beautiful too because it's also rare. One of the things that has been a hurdle in me sometimes having newer friends is feeling like there's not a sense of vulnerability. Now, granted, I don't expect that right out the gate. In fact, it might be a little bit much right out the gate. But I have been in situations where I've noticed if there's been an opportunity for a friendship to blossom that it may stall. And when I thought about it more, what I came to is that there was only a certain level of vulnerability for whatever reason that that person was willing to go to. 
And then that would make me feel like I needed to hold back. So if, essentially the friendship would just kind of fizzle out. Whereas with these, these group of women, these group of women, with this group of women, because there is that safety aspect, that comfortable aspect of having known each other for so long and not feeling judged, we can all be vulnerable in a way that allows us enables us, and enables us to connect. And so the culmination of these things, acceptance, trust, respect, vulnerability, these are four things, I might be missing some, but these are four things that come to mind that must exist in I'd say any relationship in order for it to thrive. Something else that we also don't do with each other is when we do hang out or we do get into contact with one another, it's never where have you been or why haven't you been hitting me up? We don't do that. We sometimes only talk on each other's birthdays and that's it. And that's something else that came up as well in our conversation a few weeks ago. It is just very much a space where we can all feel safe to be ourselves, to express ourselves and to express our boundaries as well. Because as we're growing in these different directions, our needs and wants do shift and they do change. And so we may need boundaries and spaces that we didn't have before. And so having that mutual respect enables us to set those boundaries and also as the person receiving the boundaries, not be so swayed or upset by it, not take it personal, that kind of thing. So I love these ladies. I, <laughs> I cannot express enough how much gratitude I have for having them in my life. We are all different in so many ways, but we're also the same in the ways that I think really matter. And I'm appreciative of that. So something for you all to consider is as you examine your relationships, how do you feel when you are with that person or those people? Do you feel energized when you're with them? Do you feel depleted? Depleted? (laughs) Do you feel depleted when you leave interactions with them? Do these things of respect, trust, acceptance, vulnerability, do these things show up? If they are important to you, do they show up in your relationships? And for those relationships where those things don't show up, is there an opportunity for those things to be cultivated? So with that, I want to thank you all for listening and I'll talk to you all in the next one.